Hey everyone, Tio here. Today I'm reviewing the XP Pen Artist Pro 14 Gen 2 Pen Display. First of all, big thanks to XP Pen for providing this review unit. And this is the world's first pen display that supports 16,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. So this review is going to be long. If you want to save time, you can check out the text review that I have already written on my blog. The link is in the video description below or use the timestamps provided to jump to different sections of this video. Let me give you the bottom line up front. This is a beautiful pen display with solid build quality and fantastic drawing performance. This matte glass surface feels quite satisfying to draw on and you don't have to worry about scratches. And the colors look good out of the box. And that's how the anti glare looks. The pen display has no hotkeys, but the company has included this shortcut remote. A pen display, in case you don't know, is actually a monitor that you can draw on. And since it's a monitor, you will have to connect this to your computer in order to draw on this. This is not a tablet and this does not support finger gestures. One of the main selling points of this display for me is the 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which is more productive compared to 16 by 9. So this 16 by 10 gives you 11% more space to work with. Downsides, the foldable feet can only deploy the pen display at this angle. So it's likely you will have to spend extra money to buy a proper tablet stand so that you can prop up the pen display at a higher angle for other purposes other than drawing. This pen display uses USB-C for video power and data transmission. If your computer uses HDMI for video, you will have to spend extra money to buy the 3 to 1 cable which is not included with this purchase. This pen display has contrast ratio of 800 to 1 and I measured color support for 95% sRGB which should be good enough for most people but the 84% Adobe RGB may not be good enough for artists who require higher color accuracy. The price of this pen display is 419 US dollars. And if you buy this pen display during the pre-order period before mid-August 2023, there is 10% off plus some goodies such as the 3 to 1 cable which supports HDMI connection and there is a tablet case. All right, on to the main review. Let's look at the items included in the box. This detailed illustration on the packaging box is from Shan Zhang, an artist from Shanghai who is based in London. And his art is absolutely beautiful and you should definitely check it out. I'll link to his website in the video description below. So this is the back and here we have the specifications which you can also find on XE Pen's website. Let's unbox this. So that's the pen display and they have cushion here to protect the pen display during shipping. This pen display comes with two years of warranty and on this sticker is the email contact information for support for different countries. So everything is very neatly laid out inside the box. Let me just take out everything and unbox and unwrap everything so that it's faster. This is a USB-A power adapter with the interchangeable plugs. This is a USB-C to USB-C video cable, two USB-A to USB-C cables. This is the USB-A extension cable, warranty card, quick start guide, microfiber cleaning cloth, the pen, the pen case with replacement nibs inside, an artist glove, and this is the ACK shortcut remote. This shortcut remote is also available for sale on XP Pen's website for US $49. This has 10 hot keys, a dial and a button in the center. And all these are customizable with the driver. This supports Bluetooth, USB, wireless connection and wired mode. And there is a rechargeable battery inside. And this is an upgrade over the XP Pen AC19 shortcut remote released a few years ago that only supports USB wireless connection. This pen display supports USB-C for video power and data. If your computer uses HDMI for video output, you will need to buy a separate 3 to 1 cable that XP Pen is selling for US $19 on their website. The 3 to 1 cable has HDMI, USB-A and USB-C and make sure the connector for USB-C is L-shaped 
because that's the only one that's small enough to go into the pen display. So this is the XP Pen Artist Pro 14 Gen 2 pen display. The design is very clean and minimalist. The corners are rounded off, but the edges are not beveled, so they can be sharp. It's not cutting edge sharp, but it's sharper compared to other pen displays that I have reviewed. And thankfully, you will not feel the edge here because it's beveled off quite nicely with the palm rest. The size of this 14-inch pen display is quite similar to this 16-inch laptop that I have. And this pen display has some weight to it. It's 1 kg, 415 grams. So on the back, there are five rubber feet. One, two, three, four, five. And these two are collapsible feet. So when you push the feet down to a low angle, it would actually snap back. This is the only elevator angle you can get with the built-in legs and this is a comfortable angle to work with for drawing but it's not ideal for other types of work such as surfing the web, watching videos or other non-drawing work. So if you are using this as your main display, you will probably want to get a tablet stand that allows you to prop up the display to a more vertical angle. And XP Pen does sell their own stands which you can purchase from their online store. This stand that I'm using is the Pablo PR100 and I like this stand because it has a latch behind that allows me to adjust the display to different angles. And I can get this to be almost vertical. Right now I have the pen display connected to the MacBook Air and this pen display is compatible with Mac OS, Windows, Android, Chromebook, and Linux. At the time of making this video, the Linux drivers are not available yet. So I'm using the included USB-C video cable for connection, which by the way is 1.5 meters long. If you find the cable too short, you can get a longer USB-C video cable. Just make sure the L-shaped connector is small enough to go into the pen display. Or you can get an extension cable, but make sure the extension cable supports video transmission. And hopefully the extension cable does not reduce power transmission because if your laptop or computer cannot provide enough power through the USB-C port to power the pen display, you will have to connect the pen display to additional power through the other USB-C port at the top with the included USB-C to USB-A cable. On the top of the pen display, you will find a power button, the brightness control buttons. This USB-C port is for the USB-C video cable, and this USB-C port is for the 3 to 1 cable, or for the USB-A to USB-C cable. The ports are labeled and they are not interchangeable, so don't connect the cable to the wrong Ports. There are two USB-C to USB-A cables included, so this is for additional power. And one of them has a smaller head, the other one has a bigger head. So only the smaller one can fit here. Even if this pen display is connected to additional power, there is no power pass through, so you will not be able to charge your laptop through the pen display. So you will have to connect your laptop to its own power source. This is a beautiful pen display. The bezels are quite big and almost uniform on the four sides. They provide you the space for resting your palm while you are drawing. There are no hotkeys, so that's why the ACK05 shortcut remote is included. The display size is 14 inches, and this is a good size for drawing. This is how big the display is compared to A4 size paper. So the width is quite similar to this A4 size pad, but the display is shorter by this much, maybe about one inch. So this is almost A4 size. Resolution of this display is 1920 by 1200. Refresh rate is 60 Hertz. The aspect ratio is 16 by 10, which to me is better for productivity compared to displays that use 16 by 9. So, for example, with more vertical space or more vertical pixels, you can use that extra space to show more content. In this case, I'm using this Mac OS workspace. I can show all the apps at the bottom, or I can hide the apps and maximize the drawing or design app that I'm using to see my work 
at a larger scale. Pen displays with 16 by 10 aspect ratio are not common and this aspect ratio is a selling point to me. The downside is when you're watching videos there will be black bars at the top and bottom but I'm not bothered by that. With the resolution with this display size there is slight pixelation but we are not talking about chunky pixels here. If you are using the display at native resolution without any UI scaling, the UI elements such as the menu, the tools, the palettes, they can look small. So you may want to increase the UI scaling by 25%. I will consider the resolution to be sharp enough. Now there are other pen displays around this size with higher resolution but those pen displays are also more expensive. This display is laminated, so there is no gap between the glass and the LCD beneath. So when you are drawing, there is no gap between the line and the pen tip. This display has good viewing angles, so the colors don't shift much when the display is viewed from extreme angles. There is some drop in brightness, but that's actually due to the glass on the display. And this display has a matte textured drawing surface which provides that nice tactile drawing experience. And this is how the anti-glare looks when there is reflection on the display. As long as there is no light source on the display, the visuals will look fantastic. Matte textured glass, which is what you get with this pen display, or matte screen protectors usually introduce slight film grain or color noise to the image quality and from what I can see here I don't really see the film grain or color noise which is great. So the visual quality you can get from this display is pretty good. This by the way is not a touch screen. The colors on this pen display look good out of the box so you may not need to color calibrate this display. Anyway, there is no OSD button, so you cannot adjust the colors with the OSD. So if you want to color calibrate this display manually, you will have to do it through your OS settings or use the XP Pen driver or use a hardware color calibrator and software. So I did color calibrate this display and I measured color support for 95% sRGB, 84% ODB RGB, 82% DCI-P3 and 80% NTSC and a maximum brightness of 208 nits. So the color accuracy for this display is good. However, if you are very particular about color or color accuracy and you need 100% Adobe RGB, then the color accuracy for this display and the 800 to 1 contrast ratio may not be sufficient enough for color critical work. For the type of work that I do at home, which is just sharing my art online, I'm fine with 95% as RGB. Let's look at the new X3 Pro Pen, which is housed inside this metal case with excellent build quality. So this is matte textured. And this will slide out to review the pen. This is the nib remover. And this texture, by the way, is rubber or silicone. There are four felt nibs included, four hard plastic nibs and that is the USB-A wireless receiver for the shortcut remote. Replacement pen nibs are available on XP Pen's website. So there's a cutout here for you to remove the pen very easily. And this is the new XP Pen X3 Pro Pen. This pen and the pen display supports 16,384 levels of pressure sensitivity. The pen also supports tilt. The pen tip has slight movement, but it doesn't go in and out. This pen is very comfortable to hold. It has a sizable silicone grip, two side buttons, and the front here is thicker to prevent your fingers from sliding down and the pen has pretty good or solid build quality. This pen is not powered by battery, so no charging is required. And at the back, there is the eraser. And now let's see what the driver can do. This is the Mac OS driver. The Windows driver has similar functionality, except there is this additional Windows Ink feature, which you may have to toggle on or off for troubleshooting when pressure sensitivity is not working as expected. This is where you can adjust the mapping area or the drawing area. 
And if there is any cursor misalignment, you can calibrate the pen and the pen display to align the cursor directly beneath the pen tip. And this is where you can change the display settings. More specifically, you can adjust the RGB and the color temperature, brightness, and contrast of the display using this driver. And this is where you can adjust or customize the pen, the two side buttons. I usually have the side button here set to switch monitor or switch display sometimes the switch display or switch monitor shortcut has a glitch or maybe it's called a feature right now it's working fine so if i click the side button here the cursor will move to the other screen and if i click again the cursor will move back here but sometimes when i click there is this additional mode where i can control the cursor across both displays just like how you can use a mouse to move the cursor across both displays to customize the shortcut remote you have to pair this with your computer first using bluetooth or usb wireless or cable connection and after you have paired this you can open xp pen driver and click here to customize the hotkeys so you can input your own keyboard shortcuts. This shortcut remote has 10 hotkeys and you can customize up to 10 shortcuts. It's possible to create up to four groups of shortcuts and use a button to switch between the groups of shortcuts. So in total, you can actually customize up to 36 shortcuts. The dial can be customized with up to four shortcuts and you can input your own keyboard shortcuts as well when you press the button in the center a pop-up will appear to show you which shortcut you are using it seems like the rotation shortcut only works with photoshop i have tried midibank paint and rotation doesn't work here this is clip studio nope doesn't work this is affinity photo nope the only way to get rotation to work with your drawing app is your drawing app must have a keyboard shortcut associated with rotation so that you can input that shortcut here with the driver. Combination key shortcuts will work. I have set command shift bracket to move the object behind and move the object in front. It is not possible to press and hold the button and have the key repeat. So if I want to increase the brush size, I will have to press the button repeatedly. If I just press once and hold, it will activate just once. And you can also create shortcuts that are specific to the drawing apps you use. So you can just add an app here and create the shortcuts for the app, which will launch automatically whenever the drawing app is launched. So this is actually quite convenient if you use many drawing or graphic design apps. Time for some line tests to see what 16,000 levels of pressure can do. So the app that I'm using is Medibank Paint Pro, and this is how thick the brush really is. I'm going to start off by drawing slow diagonal lines just to see whether there is any diagonal line wobble or jitter. So I'm drawing this freehand and later I will switch to using a ruler. The lines look straight enough to me, but let's zoom in and have a closer look. And I can see some micro jitter if i'm really very particular but this last two lines are they look straighter let me draw again close up okay this looks really straight so the micro jitter here is probably due to my handshake and now let me use a straight edge to draw the lines i have a metal ruler but i don't want the metal to scratch the display and sometimes when I use a plastic ruler, there is interference with the pen and the pen display. So this is the close up for the lines that I have just drawn with the straight edge and the lines are very straight. And now let's test the initial activation force. So that's how thick the brush really is. I will try my best to draw with minimal pressure. Now, if I hold a pen like this, it's actually not that easy to draw with minimal pressure. I find that if I hold a pen further at the back, I can draw the thinner lines more easily. I'm barely glancing the pen nib or the pen tip on the display. 
so these lines are really thin slightly thinner compared to the earlier lines that i drew while holding the pen like this so this is a very sensitive pen however how sensitive the pen really is will come down to this test to see whether or not you can draw the thin lines after drawing the very thick lines and it seems like i am able to do so the line transition from thin to thick and to thin is smooth and these are actually diagonal lines and i do not see any noticeable wobble or jitter and with the thin lines that i see here i can say that this pen is great at detecting micro changes with pressure when you are drawing with minimal pressure so this pen is indeed quite sensitive for the next test we have tapered strokes so the strokes are able to taper smoothly and sharply and this looks very natural let's see if we can maintain consistent line width by maintaining consistent pressure and i am able to do that this app midibank paint pro has some issues with drawing dots so when i tap on the display with lots of pressure by the way sometimes the dots do not appear this is less of an issue on the windows version of this app but this still happens if i switch over to clip studio paint you can see it works fine for the next test i will draw separate lines and try to join them to see whether i can join the lines easily properly without the lines overshooting and leaving gaps so this is to test for cursor misalignment and i am able to do that so the lines do not overshoot and there are no gaps let's look at tilt sensitivity so the cursor is able to follow the direction of the pen and the pen can work right to the edge of the display so if i hold the pen like this i can get the broad strokes and if i want to combine the strokes i can hold the pen this way to drag across and now i can hold the pen this way to get the broad strokes again cursor tracking is very accurate so right now i'm holding the pen almost vertically and the cursor is directly beneath the pen tip and now the pen is 45 degrees and the cursor is still directly beneath the pen tip there is no cursor misalignment and now i'm holding the pen even lower and the cursor is still directly beneath the pen tip there is no cursor misalignment as well even when the pen is at the extreme edge of the display so except for the issue with the dots with Minibank Paint Pro, the drawing performance of this pen is fantastic. The drawing performance is predictable, consistent, and there are no surprises. So this level of drawing performance is definitely suitable enough for creating professional art. And now let's talk more about the drawing experience while I draw something really quickly. I have just switched over to using the felt nib. The felt nib provides a nicer tactile drawing experience on the matte textured surface, which is already quite nice to draw on. The plastic nib is actually quite smooth on this surface. The felt nib is smooth as well, but it gives you that additional texture, which feels really nice. Let's start. So this app is Mediabank Paint Pro, and this is how thick the brush really is it's very thick so i am drawing a street scene just a quick sketch and this street scene has many diagonal lines which is great for testing whether there is any diagonal line jitter now the main thing about this display and resolution is if you do not scale the ui the text and the icons can be small now if you are using mac os and you want to scale the ui i highly recommend you use this app called better display because if you scale the ui using mac os settings the text will become more fuzzy 
The drawing experience with this felt nib is really nice. And the overall drawing experience on this pen display is really nice due to the matte textured surface. Many of the XP pen displays actually use matte screen protector. So matte screen protectors can actually scratch. Oops, I have a wobbly line due to my technique, which is not that great. The one thing I do miss about drawing on screens is this does not have touch. So I cannot rotate the canvas to draw straighter lines. Anyway, with any tool, it will take some time to get used to the tool so that you can be familiar and draw better. Okay, so far I am still drawing quite slowly. The brush that I'm using is the Sumi brush from Medibank Paint Pro, which is a textured brush, which looks really nice. Okay, so this sketch or this scene has many lines and I need to join all the lines and because the cursor tracking is very accurate, I am able to join all the lines without misalignment, without the lines overshooting. Let me increase the eraser size. Let's have a thin line here, another thin line here, and there is a building in the background which is kind of thin. Sorry, which is in the background, so I'm going to use thin lines to draw that building in the background. So I'm barely glancing the pen nib on the canvas, on the display, and I can get those really thin lines. So this pen, um, this pen is so sensitive. Let me just erase this. And let me just remind you how thick this brush really is. This is how thick that brush is. Yeah, but even with a thick brush, I can still draw the thin lines very easily. So right now I am drawing the background and all the buildings in the background should be drawn with thinner lines. So I'm just barely glancing the pen nib or the pen on the display and I can get those really thin lines to show up. And thankfully, this textured drawing surface does not introduce additional green, additional noticeable green on the image quality. Sometimes I still think this is a touch screen display, which it is not. So sometimes when I use my finger gestures, then I uh, forget that this is actually not a touch screen. Due to the lack of cursor misalignment, in other words, the cursor tracking is accurate, I am able to join all these lines with ease, without the lines overshooting. So if the pen has problem with cursor misalignment, when the lines overshoot or when the lines are leave gaps, you often have to undo or redraw and that actually wastes a lot of time. <laughs> I did that again. I've done that several times already, by the way. So I have been reviewing XP Pen products for a few years now and it's great to see that they are always coming up with new products and improvements and upgrades. So this XP Pen Artist Pro 14 is probably their best pen display so far. And I'm not sure why they call this Gen 2 because I do not recall them ever releasing a Gen 1. Let me just draw this line really slowly because it's a diagonal line. Just to let you see whether or not there is any jitter. So this is about as straight as I can draw the line and about as slowly as I can draw the lines. Um, let me draw this row of windows again. 
Yeah, so all these are actually diagonal lines and they are straight. So I definitely do not have any issues uh, with diagonal line wobble. So early on I mentioned there are some issues with drawing dots with Minibank Paint Pro. Um, the workaround is very simple. Just tap and drag slightly. There is latency if you are looking out for it, but um, when I'm drawing, I don't really see how the latency is affecting my work. So far, um, the lines are coming out exactly the way I expect them to. So as mentioned earlier, um, the performance of this pen is very predictable, very consistent. So if you want to, you can use this pen or this pen display for sketching purposes because um, the feel of sketching, um, it feels really good. Now, so far, the art that I've created is mostly line art. You can obviously use this pen display for digital painting as well. If the pen is good, it doesn't really matter whether you are using it for line art or for digital painting. And also the tapping sound is not the sharp tapping sound because this is a, let's say, a softer tip compared to the plastic tip. While drawing this, um, I was able to draw really fluidly. I did not have to think about the pen and how I have to work around the constraints of the pen because this pen has no constraints or limitations, which is great. Here's another sketch that I drew with Midibank Paint Pro. Let me turn off the colors. So this sketch was also drawn with a brush with that single size and I was able to draw the very thin lines by using minimal pressure. So I did not have to change the brush size at all. And this allows me to work very fluidly without any interruptions. Um, I really enjoyed sketching this. And this is another sketch. Um, Again, let me turn off the colors. So we have the sky, the tree, the trees. Okay. Again, this was drawn with that single thick brush. And this was actually the first artwork that I offered sketch that I drew. And when I drew the thick lines and then draw the thin lines, I was really surprised at how thin I could get those lines to be. It really feels like you're drawing with a pencil, like you're holding a pencil from the back and you are really drawing with very minimal pressure and you can get those thin lines out. All right, to conclude, the XP Pen Artist Pro 14 Gen 2 is a beautiful, well-designed pen display with fantastic drawing performance. This is the best XP Pen Pen display right now in the 13, 14, and 15 inch category. And the pricing is quite reasonable in my opinion. As to whether it's worth your money, you can decide based on the findings that I have presented. And if you are interested to get this pen display, consider using the affiliate links that I have for you in the video description below to help support my YouTube channel, to help me make more video reviews like the one you have just watched. And if you have other questions regarding this, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. See you guys again. Bye.